too close to me. For f**k's sake! Right. That's, you're not even in the centre. If you look at that, that's there, right? I'm way over here and you're like on the line. So today, I am going to go way, way back in history and talk about Sonny Bean. This is the story of Alexander Sonny Bean, the head of a 45 strong clan of cannibals in Scotland in the early 16th century, who was allegedly executed for the mass murder of over a thousand people. A thousand people? Over a thousand, allegedly. Sonny Bean was born in East Lothian, which is seven or eight miles east of Edinburgh. His father was said to be a ditch digger and hedge trimmer. He had little taste for honest labour, in other words, he was totally lazy. He was always looking for an easy way to make money. Um, and he basically um, left his parents because he didn't want to work to try and find an easier way. Unfortunately, he met a woman um, with the same credentials as himself called Agnes Douglas, known as Black Agnes. She was as corrupt as he was. Sonny and Agnes are believed to have immediately started murdering and robbing, probably cannibalising their victims before taking up home in a coastal cave in Benane Head between Girvan and Ballantrae. And they lived in that cave, which was said to be a mile deep with tunnels and passageways for 25 years. This, this is one of the more believable aspects of the story because we know that people dwelled in caves even around Kintyre. We live in a peninsula in Argyle mm -hmm. and Kintyre had caves and people lived in them right up until um, possibly the 70s. Um, there's a brilliant book by Angus Martin in Kintyre, The Hidden Past, and he actually mentions that the caves of Kintyre harboured a diversity of social groups from tinkers, tramps, destitutes and recluses. Their high protein diet helped them to thrive and oh, their numbers increased through incest. So you start with one couple who have children, who have children, who have children. The numbers um, of their children always remained the same across most of the stories. So they had eight sons, six daughters, 14 granddaughters and 18 grandsons all the products of incest. What I kept thinking about was the mortality rate's really high at that time. So basically, if they're having all these children, I mean, how many are dying and what are they doing with them? Are they eating them? Oh my God, what? I never even thought that. I know, I know. Anyway, um, the new generations were taught the same trade to kill and bring victims back to the cave. The men did the hunting and the women did the food preparation, dismemberment and so on. So uh, there was, you know, no equality in that time either. Uh, they would salt and pickle body parts for the lean seasons. So they knew how to even save stuff for, you know, the winter. Spare parts would be thrown in the water to wash up on nearby beaches and make folk think it was wild animals. They were never caught. That was their one rule and they were so secretive, they only came out at night, that nearby villagers had no idea they existed. When people started disappearing in large numbers, they were sent out and often never seen again. People were scared to travel and innkeepers closed for fear of blame. So it meant that people couldn't even travel and um, they, and if they did want to travel they'd know where to stay because all these inns were closing. There was no, no worries. Yeah. And the innkeepers, you know, thought that they would actually be blamed for it. Mm -hmm. That actually is a story that some of the innkeepers were wrongly hanged because they believed it was them because people were well, just disappearing. The last place that they'd been seen was exactly. going to stay there. Yeah. That's right. So as more and more people disappeared, um, they organised searches. Um, they even apparently found the mouth of the cave, but couldn't believe that humans would inhabit it as the sea came right up to the mouth and it was dark and inhospitable. The undoing happened when they ambushed a married couple riding from a fair. The man told them his story and they um, basically took him to a magistrate in Glasgow who got news to the king, who we think would have been James I of Scotland, later the sixth of England. Yeah. He gathered 400 men and bloodhounds and they took the man as a guide and he actually was able to lead them to where it happened and they found the cave. So um, in the Newgate calendar it actually says bloodhounds luckily entered this Chimerian den and I had to look that up because I thought what is Chimerian. Like so it comes from Greek mythology. Um, a, men, a member of the ancient nomadic people who overran Asia Minor or a member of a mythical people living in perpetual mist and darkness near the land of the dead. Which sounds mm. right. Yeah. yeah, that's a good word, I like that word. So they entered the cave with torches and they found the bean clan. Um, they must have had to walk for quite some distance though because it was miles long. Mm. But they were surrounded by human remains, hanging like dried beef around the walls, barrels filled with limbs, piles of bones, and pikes of stolen heirlooms and jewellery. So the most common version of what happened next is that the clan was captured alive and gave up without a fight. 
They were taken to Edinburgh Tollbooth Jail, then transferred to Leith or Glasgow, where they were executed with a trial because they were seen as subhuman and unfit, you know, for a trial. They didn't deserve a trial, basically. Sonny and the men had their genitalia cut off and thrown in the fire. Hands and feet were severed and they were left to bleed to death. Apparently Sonny's dying words were, it isn't over, it will never be over. <laughs> I don't know what he meant by that. After watching the men die, Agnes, the women and children were burned alive and stakes they were tied to, which is really horrific. I don't know that no matter how bad they were, you know, the general public and humans couldn't have burned alive children, no matter how bad they were, you know, so. Version two says that gunpowder was placed at the entrance to the cave where they all suffocated. Girvan, located nearby, has another legend that one of the Bean's daughters left the clan and settled in Girvan, maybe that's why he said it was never over, mm. where she planted a dual tree, D-U-L-E, that became known as the Hairy Tree. After the family's capture, her identity was revealed and the angry locals harmed her from a bough of the tree. Now, I looked up dual tree as well because it is a real thing. They were used as gallows for public hangings and as gibbets. Um, Dool, D-O-O-L, derived from the old French, sorrow, grief or mental distress or lamentation or for grieving in prominent positions, for example, Gallo Hill, mm. you know, so. Uh, and is that why Gallo Hill here is called Gallo Hill? Did they hang people there? Yes. Oh, they, hang, they hung people at Gallo Hill? Mm. I didn't know that. It's weird how it's always on a hill as well, it's high up so that you can see it. See it yeah. Is it true or folklore? No one really knows for sure. Academics have researched the story throughout the years, but they can't come to a definitive conclusion. Although it relates to the 16th century, the first publications came out in the 1700s in British chaplets, which were basically rumour magazines of the day. Um, but there is some basis for truth, and it may have been closely connected with another Scottish carnival, Christie Cleek, which was earlier in the 15th century, but has a close resemblance. Um, there is a consensus amongst the Scottish that England used it as a tale to demonise the Scots in the wake of the Jacobite Rebellion. Mm. In an entry for 1341, Hollinshed's Chronicles, 15, circa 1577, reports, In the same year as some do write, or according unto other, in the year following there was such a miserable death, both through England and Scotland, that the people were driven to eat the flesh of horses, dogs, cats, and such like unused kind of meats, to sustain their languishing lives withal. Yea, and so much that there was a Scottish man, an uplandish fellow named Tristicloak, spared not to steal children and to kill women on whose flesh he fed, as if he had been a wolf. So who knows? Wes Craven used Sonny Bean as the inspiration for his film The Hills of Eyes. Do you know what, I was actually thinking when you were telling me that story, that reminds me of the Hills of Eyes. Yeah. Is it weird that I kind of hope it's true? I know that's hor is that a horrible thing, does that make me a bad person? I think definitely there are parts of it that are true. I think it's come from truth. But also, another really interesting read online um, is the Newgate Calendar, which is a crime catalogue of Newgate Prison, um, which was a monthly bulletin of executions and it was written by the keeper of the Newgate Prison in London. So right, okay. if you look for that online, it's quite an interesting thing. It's got a lot of interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, if you want to like, investigate further. If these are the kind of things that you're interested in. And that was the story of Sonny Bean. Very good.